Hi, my name is Cameron Cassidy from the University of California, Irvine. I'm happy to share our work, Cuddling Up with a Print Braille Book, How Intimacy and Access Shapes Parents' Reading Practices with Children, with you all today. Before we begin, I'd like you to consider the following questions. Have you ever read with a child? Would you prefer a physical book or an ebook accessed via screen for reading with a child? I don't know about you, but I would prefer a physical book with printed text over an ebook. But if you look at most of the assistive technologies and reading modalities for visually impaired people, most of them are digital, like those on the left. Braille displays are electronic devices that enable users to read text by converting it into Braille characters. They present information through a series of raised dots that dynamically change as the user navigates digital content. Screen readers are software programs that assist users by converting text displayed on a screen into spoken words. They provide an auditory interface to navigate and interact with text, websites, and programs. Audiobooks are recorded narrations of books, allowing users to experience written works through audio. They were originally created for people with visual impairments and are a great example of an assistive technology becoming mainstream. On the right, we have Braille books, which are books with Braille instead of text. We also have print Braille books, which are specialized publications that combine both printed text and Braille on the same page, designed to be accessible for both visually impaired and sighted readers alike. In the realm of parent-child reading, research has explored the use of chatbots, robots, and ebooks for sighted parent-child reading. Interestingly, Single et al. found that ebooks may actually reduce the richness of parent-child narrative dialogue. Yet, when it comes to visually impaired parents, also known as VIPs, and their reading experiences with children, only one study by Storr and Branham has been published. This research explored the various technologies and strategies that VIPs employ to read with their children, but did not delve into the intricate decisions VIPs make when choosing among these technologies and strategies. This led us to consider two research questions, but today we're only going to discuss the first. How and why do VIPs read with their sighted children? To answer these questions, we interviewed 13 VIPs with children ages three to seven in hour-long interviews and conducted qualitative thematic analysis on the transcripts. From our findings, let's first discuss reading as parent-child intimacy. Our most central finding is that for VIPs, reading together was all about intimacy. Emotional closeness and being physically close are what made parent-child reading so appealing to them. And when picking a reading modality, VIPs weighed its propensity for emotional connection equal to, if not above, how accessible each reading method was, showing just how deeply they value this intimate time. Now let's talk about each of the reading modalities mentioned by VIPs in our study. VIPs mentioned five modalities, print braille books, tandem reading, audiobooks, single modality books, and ebooks, including screen readers. Print braille books were overwhelmingly preferred by our participants. This modality promotes physical closeness without favoring one user's access over the others, offering simultaneous access to both printed and brailled text. They also include images to hold the child's attention. However, it's also worth noting that these books are primarily designed with blind children in mind and almost always lack image descriptions. Tandem reading emerged in vivo as a method where each participant selects a reading modality best suited to their abilities, often pairing a braille display or audiobook for the VIP with a printed book for the child. This approach retains many of the emotional benefits associated with print braille reading, albeit incorporating some aspects of technology. However, the challenges of tandem reading include finding matching versions of the book and syncing the pages between these different formats, which can disrupt the seamless flow of shared reading experiences. Audiobooks were a go-to solution when VIPs were unavailable or tired. All VIPs in the study made regular use of voice assistants, which we call VAs, often personifying them and distributing them around the house for easy access. Accessing audiobooks through VAs, while convenient, came with many trade-offs. It replaced the parent's voice and role in the reading experience, leading to a reduction in intimacy compared to other modalities. Single modality reading was uncommon among the participants. The primary reasons for this was the accessibility issues that arose with either braille or print books. Braille books, accessible to the parent, 
lacked usability for the sighted child. The absence of pictures in Braille books diminished their ability to engage the child's attention. Similarly, print-only books are not accessible to VIPs. Consequently, VIPs opted for other reading modalities that better facilitated reading experiences for both themselves and their children. Ebooks as a standalone modality were strongly disliked by VIPs, whether accessed by screen, braille display, or audible screen reader. The presence of devices was seen as a distraction from the closeness that reading together was meant to foster. Moreover, most VIPs were opposed to the use of screens before bedtime, which is when most pairs tended to read together as a screen is necessary for the child to visually access the text and illustrations found in the book. Moving into the discussion, let's discuss intimate assistive technologies. As a refresher, the key finding of our paper is the degree to which intimacy was considered by VIPs when choosing a reading modality or strategy to read with their children. In terms of intimacy, reading modalities fell into an ordered line with disconnected on one end and intimacy on the other. For example, ebooks create a sense of distance, causing a divide with their glowing screens and mechanical voices. Conversely, print braille books stand out for their bringing readers together as they require physical closeness and do not detract from interpersonal experiences. Our choices in reading modalities matter. We found that technologies and strategies designed for shared experiences promote that priceless emotional connection that VIPs sought. But traditional assistive technologies, while useful, don't quite foster it, keeping readers in their own separate bubbles. In the context of accessibility within reading assistive technologies, we observe a continuum that ranges from independent accessibility to collaborative accessibility. Independent accessibility is demonstrated by single modality books designed to cater to the needs of an individual reader, be that a sighted or a visually impaired one. They are usable to one participant, but not both. Conversely, print braille books stand out for their bringing readers together. These books open up a world where touch and sight coexist, making a collaborative reading session. Technologies preferred by VIPs supported simultaneous access, thus fostering an inclusive reading environment. In contrast, other technologies, especially assistive technologies, are tailored for individual access limiting the capacity for shared engagement in a reading session. When we intersect the axes of intimacy and collaborative accessibility, we create a two-dimensional space. In this space, the modalities that stand out are those that prioritize both intimacy and collaborative accessibility. Interestingly, these modalities are not originally designed for VIPs. They're either intended for blind children, such as print braille books, or are strategies developed by VIPs themselves, such as tandem reading. On the other hand, professionally made assistive technologies often fell short in this intimate and collaborative space. They tend to be optimized for individual use and do not naturally lend themselves to fostering the close shared experiences that motivate VIPs to read with their children. When we intersect the axes of intimacy and accessibility, we land on a concept that reshaped our understanding of assistive technology. Intimate AT stands out as technology that not only enables individual or collaborative access, but also fosters connections, whether within oneself or between individuals. This notion takes a departure from broader HCI research, which tends to focus on mediated connections in relationships, often focusing on remote presence and achieving emotional closeness through digital channels. It also goes a step beyond what we see in accessible computing. Here, the term access intimacy is used to describe a deep understanding and meeting of access needs. However, it doesn't quite capture the unique role of technology in facilitating these deeper, more personal connections that Intimate AT is designed to foster. In essence, Intimate AT isn't just about creating access. It's about crafting experiences that prioritize intimacy and collaborative accessibility, tailored not just for blind parents, but for all those who seek an interpersonal link and their technological interactions. Moving on to our conclusionary slides. We only presented a subset of our findings that are presented in the actual paper. Read the whole paper to learn more about the limitations of reading modalities for VIPs, the access labor undertaken by VIPs to preserve intimacy, and imagined ATs for parent-child reading by VIPs themselves. I'd also like to give a very thankful shout out to my co-authors. Isabella Figuera 
Soyun Park, Jin So Kim, Dr. Emery Edwards, and Dr. Stacy Branham. And lastly, thank you for viewing my talk. The QR code on the right will take you to our paper, and I hope you have a great Kai conference.